Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Seems funny to say that coming from the podcast side of things, but I'm excited to be here. It is the first time I have put my face on the screen down here in the bottom corner, as you can see, but it is a start. A foot forward, a toe in the water. And so I am excited to give this a try. I want to talk a little bit more today about Notion. I did a video recently where I talked about this dashboard that I'm using and I'm using it to track all kinds of things during the day, all kinds of habits, different metrics that I want to keep track of, but I'm also using it very specifically to track my drawing and my daily creativity. And I wanted to look a little bit more at that today, specifically how I am keeping a visual look at things using Notion. So I explained in the previous video how I have it set up so that I can, every day as I go through my daily tracker, I can add a new drawing. And when I add a drawing, this is the one from last night, when I add a drawing, I can record a bunch of different properties, a bunch of different elements, what kind of pen I'm using, what kind of ink, what the source was, where I've shared it, whether it was for something like the 100 day project or not, whether it was part of illustrate your week, the illustrated journal project that I am doing. And it's been really, really nice to be able to do that. So something I just recently started doing though, is setting it up so that I can view these visually. So when I switch over to a view that just shows the drawings and I have this currently filtered for March and you can filter things in a variety of ways with Notion and you can use a bunch of different views. You can look at the table view or a list view or a Kanban board, depending on what you're doing. You also can control the filter. I could filter by any of these properties to give myself a different look and you can control the sort. So one of the things I recently did though is set up a gallery view so that I can see at a glance this big picture overview of some of the work from the recent days from 2021. And I didn't start doing this immediately when I started working with Notion. So I have a bunch of these still to backfill, but that's okay. Moving forward, I am trying to go in. Ideally, I might do it the same day, but usually it's a day or two later. I'll go in and add some of the, the drawings from the days before. And it doesn't matter to me if these are perfectly cleaned up. They might be the same image that I post at Instagram, or they might just be a quick phone snap. What I really want is just to be able to glance at it and say, oh yeah, I remember who this was because I can see the thumbnail there. Now you can, I've added these from my phone and I'm going to show that in just a minute, but you can actually from your desktop or laptop, you can clean these up if you want to move them into better positioning. They don't default to the best positioning necessarily, but you can clean these up. You can also view these in different sizes. If you go up here and you go to the properties for this gallery, you've got small, medium, and large in terms of the size of the card. So that would be a large and you can also use small where it would be considerably smaller. And so there you can see much smaller, six across. And then I had it on medium when I pulled this up the first time. So you can play around with that for what you want as your default view and how you want to look at things. I like this just because it is giving me this big picture look. It's giving me this visual sense of what I've done recently. I can filter the gallery as well based on different things. I could look at just 100 day project things or just illustrated journal. I will be using the same kind of setup when I get to index card a day in the summer. And I really like how this allows me to pull out different views, different sets of drawings, but also be able to keep this real gallery style look and say, oh yeah, sort of like being able to flip through your sketchbook, but you can just pull it up all at once and say, right, that's what I did there and there and there. I have been doing some drawings for Women's History Month. And so those are part of my last week's set. 
And it's really nice to be able to do it this way. I am going to show how I've been adding them from my phone. And that is pretty straightforward to do. It's definitely not complicated to do. It takes just a few minutes to add them from your so phone. So I had all of the images right now from my phone because I'm snapping these pictures on my phone. So when I open Notion and go to the drawing database, I can look at the gallery and scroll down. You can see that they are stacked in a single column on your phone, not small or side by side the way they are on the desktop. But you can scroll down and see the ones you're missing. I also have this view set up with a filter so that I only see the ones that are missing and I can open one of those up, click on image and then choose add a file or image and choose a file, click photo library and I have all of these in an album to make it easy to find them and then select the image and click choose and it takes it just a few seconds to upload it. There is a file size limit, a maximum, but you probably won't run into that very often. And then because I have this filtered after I add it, when I pull that view back up, that one's gone because it no longer has no image. So it doesn't show in that view. So I went through this morning, for example, and added in images for several of the recent drawings that I had not uploaded. Ideally, you would do this every day or the next day, whenever you take your photo, whenever you take your photo for Instagram, for example, you could go ahead and add it to your Notion. But it's pretty easy with this kind of filter to go through and say, oh, Annie Dillard, I drew her the other day. Click add a file or image, pull up the right image and attach it to the record. And you can go through and do all the ones that are blank. Because I wasn't adding the images initially, I have a backlog of entries that don't have an image yet, and I can go through and continue to add those along the way at any point. I did Sylvia Plath the other day. It's Women's History Month, so I have done several people like this, several writers. And again, you just go in, find the image, click choose, and let it upload. It's pretty easy. It's pretty awesome, really, to be able to add your images this way and bit by bit fill in the ones that are missing. Here I had a Viewmaster image from several weeks ago, part of Illustrate Your Week. Choose file, go in and find it, add it, and then it is part of this record and really easy to see it, to say, oh yeah, I did that. Whereas even looking at that big long directory of photos there, it was hard to find it one of many and it's one of thousands of photos on my phone so this way I have one image for each of these drawings that just says oh yeah that's what I did that day and that's a pretty nice thing so that is how I'm adding those images from my phone because that's where the images are and slowly I'm building this visual library this visual repository of drawings from 2021. I can filter that based on the different properties. If it's dip pen, if it's in color, if it's a self-portrait, if it's a portrait, if it's an object, if it's an illustrate your week prompt. I can do all of that with different views. I have a view set up for the 100 day project because that right now is my big project that's ongoing and I have created a gallery view for that. So this is using a slightly different look for the cards. You can set it so that the image fits or does not fit. When you select doesn't fit, when you toggle fit image off, you get the look I had in the other views. If you select fit image, then you get this zoomed out view where your images will fit. And again, you can play around with the size of your cards, however you wanna see this gallery and you can set up multiple views for that to make it easier if you just want a full size image view or a fit image view. You can do all of those things. You can sort this from earliest to latest, so from one to a hundred, or you can go backwards. This is from 100 to one. We're on day 42 today, and I have it set up right now to show the day. So there are all kinds of things you can do, and I'm really happy to be creating this visual library of 
images that I have worked on, things I have drawn, creative projects during this year. You could do this with any of your projects, with collage or painting, with cartoon work that you're doing, with practice you're doing, with sketch notes you're doing, anything that you're working on. Just pulling in this visual lets you see at a glance the big picture, all the things you've worked on over the days. And I am going to be filling out the ones that I didn't do. I wasn't initially recording images, so I need to go back and add those in. But that's fairly easy to do. And ideally, each day when I snap my photo for the drawing that I did the day before, snap a photo, typically I'm going to put that at Instagram. If I just go ahead and add it here when I next update my Notion, then this will continue to build out and fill in. So I hope you consider it. I think there are so many ways to use Notion for our creative tracking as well as any other kind of tracking that you're doing. And I'm really happy. I'm happy to be tracking habits and different kinds of things in my dashboard every day. But the drawing portion is a big part of that. Daily drawing, the illustrate your week roll up, whether or not it's 100 day project. And then within the drawings, there are a number of things that I am tracking. So I fill these in at the end of the day, usually, or maybe the next day after I've taken the photo. And I'm really happy to be creating this record. So if you are a Notion user and a creative person, I hope that you will consider subscribing and following along for more creative talk about productivity, uh, organizing your life, using Notion to keep yourself both on task and on track, and to be creating your record, your documentation, so that you can look later at how your year went creatively, what you created, what your metrics were, what kinds of things you did or didn't do, what was your percentage of things in color versus black and white. What was your percentage of drawings, for example, with dip pen versus fountain pen versus micron? There are all kinds of things that you will be able to look at if you take the time to put your data in. And if you do that every day, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy to do. If you have any questions about how to work with Notion, how to set Notion up, how you can replicate this kind of system for yourself, this is a very simple system that I continue to build to build out and to refine. I'm working it into master goals and yearly goals, the multiple different projects that I work on, which includes the Creativity Matters podcast and now includes YouTube, but it also includes the blog and social media and all of that. And there's a place for all of that in my notion, but I'm able to look at the different parts separately. And that's a really powerful thing. It's a really nice organizational approach. So if you have questions, let me know. Leave your feedback in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear how you use Notion for your creative tracking, what questions you might have, what you might want to see. And if this is something you are interested in from me, those of you who know me from the podcast or have watched draw alongs or time lapse just to listen to creative talk, let me know what you think about some organizational and productivity talk too. Thanks for watching.